Okay, uh, it's good to see you here. My name is Patricia Węgrzynowic, and today I'm going to tell you about secure authentication and session management in Java EE. Uh, first question do you, uh, to you. Do you have your devices working like connected to Wi-Fi, your laptops, lo your cell phones, etc.? Do you have it? Okay, perfect, because I will need your help in my demos, so we we'll like cooperating together. Brief briefly about myself, I've been doing professional software development for nearly 20 years. I've always been close to code and I still am. And I have to say, I love it. Uh, most recently, uh, I found it and I'm the CTO of Yonita. Yonita is a startup where we work on uh, automated tools for uh, detection and refactoring various defects in bugs uh, in software. Basically, we, we focus on uh, security, performance, concurrency, and databases. So basically, security vulnerabilities are my daily job. What am I going to talk about today? First, a brief introduction to security problems, HTTP, and session concept. Uh, the key part of today's uh, talk includes four demos uh, that illustrate how to hijack the session, how to use XSS to steal the user's session, or how to exploit uh, cross-site request forgery to use the session without the user's permission or even without uh, his or her knowledge. Uh, so, security stories 2014-2015 um, basically, for last two decades, web technologies have experienced significant growth. The number, the size, and the complexity of web applications have increased substantially. And surprisingly, many new techniques to attack IT applications have been discovered as well. The years 2014 and 2015 show that pretty well. How many of you have heard about uh, Heartbleed. Yeah, almost like all of you. Uh, shell shock. Uh, that's uh, less common knowledge. It's a bug in, in uh, basically sh uh, shell bash. Uh, what about logjam? Yes, we have two guys who heard about that. Um, as uh, basically, uh, it's, a, it's uh, an attack against TLS protocol, particularly Diffie-Hellman key exchange, and basically it allows to uh, downgrade encryption and then still uh, uh, transport the data. So basically, we see how many very serious vulnerabilities have been discovered in recent years. And I'm not saying here about uh, data breaches, uh, attacks against some big corporation, etc. So there is no doubt security is important in today's world. So let's get back to the web. HTTP. HTTP is the foundation of data communication for the World Wide Web. It's a stateless application protocol based on a request-response communication schema. What does it mean, stateless? It means that each request is processed independently. And as we think of web applications, there is an obvious need for statefulness. We must keep track of uh, the user authentication. We must keep track of his interaction with our application. Uh, for example, to display some personalized data, like, uh, for example, shopping basket, right? We need to keep track of those data and the single interaction with this single particular user. Uh, so um, how can we achieve that? So for you, uh, the answer is simple, right? As Java developers, you know that we use the concept of a session. A web session identifies interactions with one user. Uh, the implementation of session concept is simple. We need to associate a unique identifier with every requ request coming from the same user. 
in Java EE, this identifies name change session ID and is implemented as a cookie or URL parameter. Everything works great, right? So what's the problem? The problem's here. Uh, broken authentication and session management is number two on the list of the top 10 security risks according to OWASP. OWASP, OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project. It's a non-for-profit organization which aims at increasing security awareness among software developers. Uh, and every two or three years, uh, OWASP publishes the list of, li uh, of top 10 security vulnerabilities in web applications. It turns out that authentication and session management cause uh, a lot of troubles to software developers. Uh, why? I think the problem is that we rely on a platform, right? I remember myself from like 10 years ago and my approach was, uh, what are you talking to me, my security officer? Everything works great because I use Java. It should be uh, implemented in my platform, right? And actually, that's not the case. Uh, so, as developers, we rely on session ID as a single mean to identify the user and we don't protect the session ID carefully enough. Uh, so, about session hijacking. Uh, uh, there are three primary types of session attacks. The first one is to steal the user's session ID. Uh, the theft can be done in various m ways, like um, session ID can be exposed in URL, we can sniff a session ID, uh, we can use some uh, network monitoring tool to, to get uh, access to packets transferred over network, uh, we can see server logs, etc. The second type of s uh, attack attacks against session is to fix a session and trick a user to log in with our fixed session ID. And the third one is to guess the session ID in cases where the algorithm used uh, to generate a session ID is too weak. Uh, this one is the least likely in the Java world, but still it can happen. How many of you uses Jetty in production? Okay, so you, you can be vulnerable vulnerable to this kind of attack because Jetty, uh, at least at last time I, I checked it, uh, it used a uh, relatively short session ID, like eight or 10 characters. That's too short session ID and, and it might be vulnerable to session prediction. Uh, okay, so now it's time for the first demo. Uh, this is about session exposition, exposition in URL. Uh, for demos, I will use my Twitter uh, account. I will post some links on Twitter. Uh, you can access them and then we can cooperate together to, uh, to, to make it working and to show how hijack a session. So uh, the first demo is that I will log into my sample application. I will post a link my, with my session ID on my Twitter. My Twitter handle is Yonlabs. And then you will access uh, the link and this way you will hijack my session. Okay, so it's time, session exposure. Uh, that's a demo application. You see that J session ID is simply visible in URL. I will post this link with my session ID on Twitter. And then you will access you will access it and you can get access to my secrets. And what are my secrets? How many hackers have hijacked my session ID? So uh, for now it's only myself. Oh, 
we've got already four. You are really fast. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't expect that. Anyway, you see that uh, we see different, uh, we, we have like three the same um, IP addresses. I guess that three of us uses uh, the conference Wi-Fi. Uh, we have different user agents. Uh, my is Firefox. We have Safari, Mumbai Safari, and uh, Android uh, platform, so obviously your cell phones. So that was a piece of cake, right? Very easy. Um. <laughs> so how can we, uh, what was the main problem of the demo? The problem was obvious. Uh, we, we had session ID exposed in URL, right? Uh, think of all those public places here you serve web, like conference, like uh, lectures, uh, like coffee shops. And if you're, and think how easily it's to take a photo of your screen, right? So uh, imagine how, I so you've just seen uh, that it's even easier to use the capture session ID later on. So um, the default behavior of Java web app is that it allows cookies uh, as well as URL rewriting. So cookies are the first choice, but an application falls back on uh, URL rewriting in case of uh, disabled cookie cookies in, in browser. There are two options to disable URL rewriting at all. We can disable URL rewriting in an app server, and uh, this is an app server specific configuration, or we can use a tracking mode in our web XML. Uh, Tracking mode is a parameter available in uh, web, web app XML. It's available since Java E6 and several spec uh, 3.0. Uh, by setting tracking mode to uh, cookie, we disable URL rewriting at all. So that's, uh, that's our first device. Uh, but even if we disable URL rewriting, hackers can still eavesdrop user session IDs. However, now they need to put more effort into it. For example, they can use network monitoring or packet sniffing tools. And once they find session ID, they can use it as a cookie. They can use a plugin or add-on for a browser that enables cookie management, like Cookie Manager for Firefox. They can use an intercepting proxy that allows to modify HTTP requests, like uh, OWASP Z application proxy. Uh, finally, they can write their own code. Uh, we, we know that it's easy to, to write code that connects to, to the application in question. So it's time for another demo. You've already hijacked my session. Now it's time for me to hijack one of your session. I will use two tools, TCP dump for network monitoring and uh, uh, cookie manager, that's an add-on for uh, Firefox to, to set up the stolen cookie. And the application is almost the same as the last one. I've only changed the tracking mode to cookie and the authentication realm to the custom realm that allows uh, to log in for any non-empty username. So you can log into my application, and then I will, uh, I will hijack the session. OK. Uh, let me log. Uh, OK, I'm logged into my server. I will run TCP dump. Mm. Oh, something's frozen. Wait a moment. That's always the risk of live demos. But actually, it didn't happen so often to me. Uh, only uh, I gave the talk like uh, eight times, and uh, only once I had a problem with Wi Fi. Okay, uh, here I have a problem. Mm. Um, wait, 
the moments. that my my server is at uh, Amazon cloud uh. oops Houston we have a problem yes I am reconnect Let's see. Hopefully, okay, we are here. Now it's better. Yeah, thank you for your help. That was really good. Okay, now we have uh, TCP dump running on, on my server. Actually, uh, it doesn't need to be the app server. It needs to be any uh, any uh, hosts which uh, the packets are transported through. Uh, for me, it's uh, easier to do that on, on my app server. Okay, so now we are switching to, to another application. This one does not allow for uh, Okay, this application allows for any user to log in. I will post this uh, link on Twitter. And now it's your turn to log in. I'm logging as Patricia, you log in as yourself or any fictional user, but not Patricia, remember that. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, looking at uh, the packets transferred that's just HTTP requests and responses coming in and out. And I will catch one of, of your session IDs. Okay, I, oh, it was too fast. Okay, got it. So I have this J session ID and I will try to use Cookie Manager. Uh, to, to hijack it. Okay, that's as simple as it looks. And now I will refresh. And it didn't work. <laughs> okay, once again. Uh, uh, with me. Uh, okay, let's find some interesting uh, J session ID. Let's let's give a try to this one. Uh, again, I need to find a cookie for the right application. Oh, we got it, finally. I was really a little bit afraid and worried. Okay, who is Gigi? Or Gigi, or how do you pronounce? Congratulations, I hijacked your session. Thank you for your cooperation, it was very nice of you. And now you see that I'm really happy and like, oof, we are done with that one. <laughs> Okay, so um, the question to you, how can we avoid session exposure during transport? Because that's what I exploited during this attack. I exploited that we transported the cookie in like a plain text, right? So, yes, you have a smart audience. 
encrypt USA HTTPS, exactly the case. How to configure that? First, in WebXML, we set up security constraint to use a transport guarantee set to confidential. And also, in WebXML, we configure the secure flag for cookies. It prohibits browsers from sending cookies over unencrypted channels. So we guarantee that way that cookies will be sent only over HTTPS. This configuration parameter has been introduced in Java EE6. In previous versions, we have to use like a custom interceptor to add this flag to a cookie. And so this flag is very important because HTTPS is not enough because still uh, think about real world applications. Usually um, static resources are served from uh, different uh, application serv uh, web servers, right? So, and uh, if they are served, and different applications web servers, and also uh, from HTTP, not HTTPS, just to make it faster. And in that case, a uh, browser doesn't know whether it's a static resource or whether it's a dynamic application. So it always sends a cookie, even though it's only a static resource request. So to prohibit that, we uh, configure a secure flag for a cookie. And this way, browsers know that this cookie should be sent only over secure channels, HTTPS. So this one is very important and not that well known. How many of you have heard about secure flag before? A few of you, but still most of you didn't know that, so good that you are here. Uh, so, um, so far we've made sure that our session ID won't leak during transport. But there are two other places our session ID can be exposed, the client side and the server side. On the client side, the typical attack to steal a session ID involves XSS, cross-site scripting. But also beware of malware that is spread via email, exploit browsers, or uh, OS vulnerabilities. If something can access your browser data, data it means that it can steal your session. Uh, usually we don't care so much about the server side, but remember that many attacks are performed by insiders. So don't store user session IDs in your logs. Think of secure channels for session replication. How many of you uh, use this uh, application server clustering with uh, session replication? Two of you. So that's not uh, a very popular approach in these days, but still it, it's seen in production. And uh, beware to make sure that your session is replicated over secure channels. Otherwise, it can be intercepted and stolen by some insider hacker. Uh, so how to steal a session if secure transport is used? Uh, it's not that easy. I mentioned XSS. Uh, so um, we'll attack a client with XSS. That's our time for next demo. Session ID grabbed by XSS. Uh, to steal a session via XSS, we need three pieces of code working together. The first one is JavaScript code to steal a cookie. The second one is a servlet that logs down stolen cookies. I mean servlet, but uh, I said servlet, but I mean any application, web application that writes down stolen cookies. And the last but not least, we need a vulnerable application that will be exploited via injected JavaScript code. Uh, so, uh, our third demo will look like uh, this. I will store malicious JavaScript uh, in the application. Uh, then uh, you will log into the vulnerable application and, uh, and you will see the opinions which are displayed on, on the web page and uh, then just wait until I hijack one of your sessions again.
so that's our third application. Please share your opinion about Vox Bucharest. So far, it's been a great conference. Do you agree? Is it a great conference? Yeah. So we are on the same page. But let me take a look at my script. It is an awesome conference. And now, when you take a look at uh, opinions, you see only this is an awesome conference. The script is like in the page source. Uh, you can see that the script is here, but it's not visible to a regular user, right? Because it's a script. That's it. Okay, so. So now it's time for you to uh, to access, to write your own opinion about Vox to Bucharest and, and to access others' opinion. Okay. We'll see. Oh, it's okay. What does it mean, the last one? I don't understand it. <laughs> okay, so so now I, I will just observe logs. Oh, oh maybe grab logs. Okay, so we've got... Uh, <laughs> Krusovica is great. What is Krusovica? I guess some uh, city, place, right? Okay. Okay. We've got uh, a bunch of interesting opinions here. Okay, so now it's time for cookie. Uh, okay, this one. Uh, can you access uh, this pages? Okay, we'll try this one because I. Okay. Now. I'm Christy now. Who is Christy? Okay. So your session has been hijacked just now. Are you happy now? <laughs> so basically you've seen how easy it is to hijack uh, a session. I've used uh, Cookie Manager just to replace my session, but uh, I can use uh, OWASP intercepting proxy as well. Do you want to see it? How does it look like? Uh, I need to configure in pre Firefox preferences uh, proxy, so connection parameters. Uh, my OWASP application proxy runs on, on my local machine. Oh my god, it's very small here. Okay, we got it bigger. Okay, it runs on port uh, 9090, so I configure localhost proxy 9090 for my Firefox. And uh, I will hijack another session. Oh, that's a problem because you know uh, with HTTPS, I'm going through proxy, so now it's not uh, not uh, not safe for Firefox at least. We'll see. Advanced, yeah. Add exception and we are we are done. Uh, okay. Uh, now I will configure like a breakpoint. 
for demoyonita.com and this time everything goes through my proxy, OASPZ attack proxy. And uh, with breakpoint, it will stop at uh, each request that contains domain yonita.com. Uh, so I will find another another cookie. Okay, I will give a try to this one. I'm refreshing the page now. Uh, the proxy just intercepted the request. We'll see J session ID in plain text here, so we can edit it and then run. Now we are a mysterious M. Who is M? No one here? <laughs> oh my God, that's really a mystery. Okay. So obviously it wasn't me, so uh, we've managed to hijack another session, uh, this time using uh, that application proxy. Uh, it's more convenient to use Cookie Manager just for that simple manipulation of HTTP request, but if you want to do something more complicated, uh, it's more convenient uh, to use uh, some, uh, some uh, proxy because you have like more ways to manipulate HTTP uh, headers and, and the content. So how can, you vo how can you avoid XSS? What ways of protecting ap your application against XSS do you know so far? And yes. Yes, um, because you've, you've got like uh, two ways uh, to, to protect against XSS. You can protect your session ID, your cookie, and you can protect uh, in general against XSS, like validating your input parameters and escaping output. Uh, so now let's take a look at uh, let's take a closer look at our JavaScript code. It's really very simple. Here we have a hacker service, so the servlet that logs down all the cookies, and we load uh, this uh, URL into uh, into an image source just to bypass the policy of browsers, the same origin policy, because browsers will not allow to connect to other web servers than the domain that the request comes from. So um, to bypass that, we use image because this policy does not apply to images and scripts. We can um, load images and scripts from other addresses. And uh, yes. Uh, wait a moment. Yes. Uh, here for servlet, uh, I'm using HTTP only. Uh, okay. Uh, here I'm. I have like a important part of the script uh, missing. Take a look at. Take a look here. It's document.qki. It doesn't send cookie, uh, cookie in, a, in header, it sends as a URL parameter because I'm accessing uh, document.cookie from JavaScript. So it, it was missing on the slide. But you are very careful, paying attention. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's like a constant race between hackers and, and uh, good guys, bad guys and good guys. Browsers implement more and more um, policies and so on to, to protect their users against, uh, against various types of attacks. Mm. 
So let's get back to the slides. Uh, okay, we call, here we focus only on the session side. So to protect ourselves uh, against XSS, uh, pr to protect our cookies against XSS, we should use HTTP only flag for our cookie. Uh, it's a shame that it's not enabled by default. I don't know why. But uh, you need explicit configuration in your web app XML to make it working. Uh, it's available since Java E6 and Servlet 3.0. Again, uh, in, pro, uh, in, in versions before, you need to use like your own interceptor to add those flags to your cookies. Uh, the funny thing about HTTP only flag is that uh, it's not part of a standard HTTP. So it's an uh, additional configuration parameter which is uh, um, which is like uh, present in most browsers, but not all browsers. And the funny thing is that it's been introduced by Internet Explorer. Uh, so, and later on adapted by other browsers as well. So it's like de facto standard, but it's not in uh, standards uh, in HTTP. Uh, so, to protect ourselves against XSS in a more general way, we need to validate inputs and to escape our out outputs. Um, do you use JSP? Uh, so for, for sure you know a dollar curly braces notation. So by default it doesn't uh, escape parameters. So that's exactly the code I used to produce a vulnerable application. Let's take a look at the code. And the JSP for opinions is as simple as that. I'm just outputting opinion using dollar curly braces notation. And by default, it doesn't do any escaping if you escape with uh, some tags, it might do escaping for you. Therefore, the user will see just script as it is written because the uh, braces will be escaped and it won't be a valid HTML uh, tag. Take a look at, at Facelet. Uh, how many of you uses Java server faces? Okay, so you probably use facelets, right? XHTML. So exactly the same code in facelets works fine. So it protects against XSS because by default, the exactly the same notation, dollar, curly braces, has a different semantic than in JSP. So it escapes all... Uh, all characters like uh, like braces for tags, HTML tags. Therefore, in the result in web page, you won't get script tag as a HTML script tag, but you've got like like a text. So that's uh, no difference in syntax, but huge difference in semantic. Okay, uh, another type of attack I mentioned before is session fixation. A session, fi session fixation is pretty simple. Hacker opens a web page of a system in a browser, and usually it means that a uh, new session is initialized on the server side, right? Any request sent to our Java application usually initializes a session. So hacker has access to the computer in question, so he can access uh, all the cookies, just writes down the session ID and leaves the browser open. Then user comes in and logs to the application. What happens? Uh, usually user uses the session 
initialized by the hacker. Now hacker can, can use the previously written down session ID to hijack the user's session and to exploit um, session privileges which were assigned to this user. So uh, the solution to session fixation is that after successful login, we should change the session ID. In Java EE7, Servlet 3.1, we have change session ID method. In Java EE6, we need to uh, make use of a pair of methods like invalidate session first and then get session through to initialize a new session. And now summary of secure session management best practices. Random unpredictable session ID, at least 16 characters long. Um, this is uh, valid for most Java application server except Jetty. Um, then you, you should use secure transport and storage of your session IDs. Um, obviously, cookie preferred over URL rewriting, cookie flags secure and HTTP only. Keep in mind that and configure properly in your web XML. Uh, consistent use of HTTPS. Uh, think how your static content is served and from which servers. Don't mix HTTP and HTTPS under the same domain cookie path. Even though we have uh, secure and HTTP only flags, still some other types of attack can be uh, developed against HTTP and HTTPS. So it's better to, uh, to, keep, to stick with good practices. And don't use too broad uh, cookie paths because cookies can be easily uh, stolen if uh, too broad cookie path is uh, used. Like you can reconfigure your server, you can mix HTTP and HTTPS, and so on. Uh, session creation and destruction. New session ID after login basically after any escalation of privileges. Obviously, logout button. Uh, the default uh, session timeout is 30 minutes. That's pretty OK for the average application. But for critical application, you should use like um, shorter session timeouts, two to five minutes. Um, the main problem of our hijacking attempts was that uh, session ID was a single mean to identify the interaction with a single user, right? Um, we can take some countermeasures to balance this risk, and we can do like fingerprint of the first uh, request that comes from a given user. Uh, we can store on the server side uh, some additional headers like IP, uh, like user agent, and then with every uh, uh, every next request, subsequent request, we can check whether our original fingerprint matches the the new fingerprint. If it's okay, that's fine. If they don't match something's going on, Probra probably so, uh, some hackers want to exploit the session. So it's better to invalidate the session and uh, to be on the safe side, on the server side. Uh, in case of secure authentication based practices, we have two uh, approaches in Java EE. We have declarative authentication implementing using annotation and descriptors. Uh, most uh, servers uh, does not force new session ID after login. So it's uh, like uh, app server specific, you need to check it for your server. Uh, in programmatic authentication uh, with Java EE7 and Servlet 3.1, you have authenticate, login, logout, and you can implement advanced flows and requirements. So my choice usually is programmatic authentication with Java EE7 because I have more control over um, session management in that case. And declarative authorization 
with web XML and annotation like uh, rolls allowed, permit all, and deny all. So uh, basically, we think that after we configure all properly, we are on the safe side when it comes to session. Uh, we've turned on the HTTP only flag, secure flag. Now JavaScript code can't access the cookies. Cookies are sent only over encrypted channels. So what can we do if we can't steal a cookie? Well, exactly, who said that? Congratulations. We can still use it, yes, using cross-site request forgery. And so uh, we'll exploit cross-site request forgery vulnerability that makes use of a browser feature related to cookie management. Uh, if a brow browser has a cookie for a given domain name, it will send the cookie with every request to this domain name, even the request made from a different tab or a different window. So it's our last demo. Uh, Cross-site request forgery to use a cookie. I will log into the application. Then you will log into the application and then you will access my completely unsuspicious page with very nice button, click me. And then I will check my account balance. Okay. Okay, uh, give me a moment, I need to, okay, uh, it's better for me to turn off the proxy, so I need to change the connection preferences in Firefox, no proxy, and uh, okay. That's my account with 100 euro, 1,000, sorry, 1,000 euro. I will post this link for you. You can create your own account with 1,000 euro as well. That's pretty nice balance. Okay, so please log in. And... Um, this is an unsuspicious page with click me button, like eat me. <laughs> so if you are locked in, you are allowed to click me. Okay, no one yet. No one yet. How many of you managed to log into the application? Raise your hands, please. Yes, a few of you. Sorry? Okay, uh, you don't need to do anything, just click another, uh, click uh, the second link with this unsuspicious space and click me button and you will see what happened then. Yes, exactly. I've got a lot of money transferred from your accounts. 666, all those 666 are from you and from my unsuspicious page. Uh, let's take a look at the page source. Uh, you see a hidden form here, right? With predefined values like two is set to Patricia and amount is set to 666. So if you clicked the button, click me, in the background, the post request uh, with predefined values has been sent to my server and the money trans has been transferred to my account. That's exactly how cross-site request forgery works. Uh, in this case, uh, you see that uh, 
I have uh, another hidden field like view state. I've used Java server faces for my uh, application. And by default, Java server faces uh, protects against cross-site request forgery. Because how can we protect against uh, cross-site request forgery? Anyone knows? Yes, unique one-time token associated with every request. So basically, most web frameworks have support for automatically generating tokens for our uh, forms and then validating the tokens on the server side. Uh, and in this case, I had to explicitly turn it off for Java server faces. But again, it's uh, web framework specific, so it depends on the frame web framework you use and you need to check your web framework, how it uh, protects against cross-site request forgery. Um. Uh, remember and also remember that not uh, that you should protect all sensitive requests from the client side. It uh, includes REST services as well. Uh, so the overall conclusion from today's presentation: you are never safe. Nobody's perfect. There is a constant race between good guys and bad guys. We are the good guys. And uh, we need to do our best to make our application safe. It means learn, learn, and learn. Thank you. Do you have any questions? If you have any questions, we can chat during break. So. Uh, basically, uh, Spring libraries has very rich support when it comes to session management and uh, 